สวัสดีครับ uh, This is David f o u n d my YouTube channel David f o u n d Thank you for joining me today uh, to talk about a very, an important element which we we always need but we never seem to make the effort to buy one or have one available to us when we are producing our videos and that is a teleprompter or a Q prompter uh, Q assist of so something of that uh, description so as I've done quite a lot of shooting uh, whereby we need people doing a talking head or a piece to camera as I classify it I thought well maybe I should make the effort to make one for myself instead of investing or paying out something in the region of uh, $200 for a teleprompter uh, to do the job I need to do so I thought well let's have a look around the house and see what we can find that may do the job so I've dug out a few things that I put together and on my right is the sort of completed unit as far as the actual uh, glass uh, screen is concerned and uh, the the base for it as well so how did this come about well it's frustrating when you have a job to do and you have no way of having people read script with a teleprompter and be able to look at the screen look at the um, look at the lens of the camera, look at the camera, essentially look in the eyes, at eye level, eye point. So I dug around for a few things. I came, first of all, with this uh, picture frame uh, with a nice piece of glass. It was rather dirty, so I was hoping that uh, the glass would clean without uh, any scratches or anything, and fortunately it has. Now, this, uh, the, the frame width, the total frame width is uh, 55 centimeters. The actual glass width is 50 centimeters. So let's measure the glass, glass width. It's 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Um, and in the, the world of inches or imperial measurements, it's uh, 20 uh, inches by a good one foot, okay? That's for you people that are still stuck in the old world of imperial measurements. Um, so, uh, I, I've spent a couple of days building this. It's taken a little bit of practice to get it right, and I hope, and it seems to be okay. Um, obviously, the glass that I've used is picture frame glass. It's not a professional grade glass, which is beam splitter glass, um, for uh, the use of... Uh, teleprop professional teleprompters, but that's a lot more expensive and as I'm based in Thailand, it's very hard to find um, So I've got the frame and The base for this is an old whiteboard. So I thought well, I'll give one a try Well, I, I quite like the size of this said the actress to the bishop I didn't say that which uh, is uh, 60 just over 60 centimeters by uh, 40 centimeters. So I thought, well, this is, in, in, you know, what, I'd like to have a teleprompter that's fairly decent size, so that when it's set at quite a distance, maybe, you know, three, four meters from the camera, it can be read with fairly large text. So this is the base of that. This is the base of this, okay? Now, the other elements that I had around the house, I will show you my skylight uh, hanging down from the ceiling at some stage. You'll see the rails, uh, curtain rails that I've used for that. Um, now, I'll just put this down on the side and I'll just show you the, the rails that I've used uh, for the manufacturing of this teleprompter. I thought, well, I always like things to be able to be replaced or be to be sliding so that you can slide them in and you don't have to have them fixed. Uh, it makes sense to have things which are, have some, some versatility and obviously portability. Um, there's one element to this teleprompter which is not portable. Uh, well, it can be, it's not very big, but I'll show you that later. These essentially are 
what I've used on my skylight to uh, have rails in there and the ability to the ability to uh, excuse me while I keep moving around but the ability to have uh, these um, what I've used quite a lot of are uh, the feature board in Tylenicon future boards and the idea is that these uh, with them being too glued together that they actually sit into these rails and they will slide into there which makes life a lot easier if you want to replace anything or clean anything it just makes sense that things are not fixed permanently so these are rails which are used for curtains dividing a room they're not actually used for uh, window curtains they use for when you divide the ones you've probably seen in an emergency room at a hospital hopefully you've never been in an emergency room but I'm sure you've been to a hospital where you've seen these actually hanging on this uh, these actually attached to the ceiling and then they pull the curtain around to give you privacy or privacy so these are used for dividing or for separating uh, compartments in, in, in rooms so that's that's what I had around the house anyway because I had to buy um, I had to buy 12 meters two six meter strips to uh, make my um, the shades I've made for my skylight I'll talk about that at some other stage but um, so essentially the, the the parts that we've used for this build is an old whiteboard not ideal because I had to reinforce it, but it's basically trying to use as least possible investment and use things around the home so that they get used and of course are put to use. So this is a this is basically this is based on two uh, pieces of a feature board, and I'll explain to you why what I've done here with a feature board. You can see the the ribs run uh, horizontally and on this side the ribs run uh, vertically and the idea of that is that if you glue a vertical uh, and a horizontal panel uh, uh, piece together, sheet together, it uh, provides them with substantial reinforcement so that they can't bend and break as easily as they were if both ribs were running in the same direction. So just a tip to you for anybody that's putting, uh, using a couple of feature boards glued together, don't glue them together with the ribs running the same way because they can then, they're not as strong and they can break quite easily and, and they'll fold uh, quite easily. This was actually, this piece here was designed for the, the panel at the back or these rails at the back so that I can actually protect the glass uh, by inserting these in there and now the glass is protected from the back so this becomes portable and uh, yeah it's, it's nice that it's portable and I can fold that up and that becomes a portable unit now um, what's important here is that you have not only, port not only portability but strength and the original uh, picture frame is fine, it was still strong. I've reinforced it a little bit with my staple gun and a bit more glue. And now I have a very uh, substantially strong unit. So that's you, the use of, uh, I don't know what you call this in other parts of the world, but we call it future board, uh, feature board, future board in Thailand. And it's used for a lot of art work and uh, uh, artistic work and design work as well. So these rails, these are serving a really, really good purpose because they, um, they're now sitting on, on the, on, I've glued these to the uh, picture frame like this and like that. And then there's one at the end, of course. And then this, this end is open so I can slide um, the feature board into there. Now, one thing I had to do, um, because the um, because the uh, the whiteboard was not very strong, it's only made of quite thin hardboard, was important for me to uh, reinforce or strengthen it. So this is covered now with a feature board, but underneath here, there's actually uh, just again something else around the house from a broken ceiling fan. One of the blades is actually about this long. 
and it's actually been attached inside, glued as well to the, um, the whiteboard, the hardboard, glued in there, it's been screwed in as well, and then um, on the top here, what we have is a, originally, which maybe I should have not closed it before I did this video, but under here, uh, just something else I found in the house was from an old uh, Radon uh, 6500 graphics card, which I took it apart, and there's a piece of metal, a metal strip here, which is quite strong, which I've used to reinforce the uh, the, the, the actual hardboard or the or the whiteboard, and then felt the felt I've used here, which is quite nice. It's nice as a finishing touch. Put the felt on here, which is from Chinatown, and it's about 70 baht a square meter, just black felt and that's been glued onto the whiteboard and that just provides a nice soft surface and of course anti-reflective as well which is important. So the felt I have purchased and used um, it's actually one side is for the gluing or the attachment and one side is the, the felt the softer surface one has got a harder surface and I run down to Chinatown on my motorcycle and I pick this up and I wish I'd bought, always, you always wish you'd bought more because at 70 baht a square meter, it's one and a half meter length and you buy a one, and a, one meter width of it and it's a little bit more than one square meter, but it's, it's very, very good value. And now with the motorcycle I have, I just run into Chinatown and it's very straightforward. So the mixture of the picture frame, the curtain rails, the feature board, the felt, and one other element which was important to have was some strength, was, was the ability to be able to mount this on a, a light stand or on a tripod. Now, what I've done, based on the fact that this, um, um, on the other side of this is that uh, plate from the Radon graphics card, I've used a, uh, what's called a multiple flash attachment bar, uh, which is ideal. So I bolted this into the, uh, this, this, this uh, whiteboard, this, this base, and now what I have is the ability to uh, add a tripod adapter. This is the, tri obviously right now I don't use it because I'm using it on a table and it's nice to have the, what, the uh, teleprompter to be able to be stood on a table. Now, a lot of people are building quite small uh, uh, units, uh, uh, teleprompters. I wanted to build one about this size, which I believe is quite ideal because with a decent sized laptop or a, uh, a, a sort of a notepad, the ones that have the folding screens or a screen of say, um, so, uh, what screen would be would be put in there? We put a screen or a monitor. We could put a um, sort of a, a 20 inch monitor in there. In fact, maybe maybe less, maybe 17, 19 inch. I would say if you put a 19 inch monitor on there or 17, this would give you a very large text for any distance that you need from the camera. Perhaps when you want to do a full body shot of a talking head, not just a talking head, talk, talking body as such. So. This is the uh, tripod uh, ad attachment, and this goes into the, the base here, which was essentially used to give you the ability to have more than one flash uh, on a camera. So it gives you a plate, a flash plate, you've got for maybe macro work or for other types of jobs. So this has given me the ability to uh, screw that into there, and if I just get my tripod, put the camera, over there for now and uh, this is a, an old old light stand in fact this is an old light light stand and uh, what I can do now is just slot that into there and um, this gives me the ability this is quite strong it's actually quite I've seen a few people make them and you know there's just no strength in it but this is actually fairly strong well, it's actually very strong put this up, put that down, put the leg stand there, and then I can uh, obviously um, have the camera on the other side. The, the iPad will sit on here, uh, or the, the laptop or whatever else, and you'll have your text on the screen. So let's just take that off for now. 
And what I don't worry about is I can release this and then just lift it up and put it back down, close the, the glass, turn it over and take out the tripod mount. That's a tripod mount. Now, pretty cool, right? So, um, and also what I had in the house was a, was a keyboard stand. Now, if I need to use just like for lower level um, and just something like a stand, I have a keyboard stand. I can put the unit on a keyboard stand and there you go. It's giving me a few options. And the, the legs that I've added to the, the base of this are just simply the feature board cut into strips and glued to the, the base of the feature board. So, um, obviously this needs a bit more than just uh, the, the glass and the, um, uh, the glass and the frame. It needs to have some glare protection. So I, this is the only element that I'm going to talk about now is the element which is not being designed to fold. In fact, what I will do uh, very soon, I'll, I'll make one that's uh, foldable. And that's this part of the uh, cover. Now, a lot of um, other YouTubers and uh, people that are making these uh, teleprompters are actually just trimming off their anti-glare cover and they're just trimming it down to the 45 degrees that the glass is actually angled at. But I decided to go with this idea whereby by using these, these rails, which I've put down uh, both sides, what I can do now, I can actually add this, again, feature board uh, each panel is made from two. Again, they're um, cross ribbing, meaning that uh, one is going vertical, one is going horizontal to give you extra strength. I've cut out this hole here with my very, very old circle cutter, uh, which goes back about 30 years. I bought it and I didn't think I'd ever, ever use it again. Dug it out and I've, dug, I've cut a hole in here, which is the size of my uh, Sony uh, 24105 front uh, lens. It's just a little bit bigger, obviously. Um, and that sits onto there. That fits into these rails, like so. Fits into the rails. And now, what we have is a fairly decent sized teleprompter. Um, and it's completely shaded inside. And obviously the element that we need next, of course, is the camera so this is working very well now the camera um, I haven't built this so that we have a camera plate so it can be mounted on one tripod which is a little bit cumbersome and a bit sort of awkward to you so I've designed this so that this goes on its own stand then you'd have a tripod which you see in the background to place your camera um, and the uh, the hole I've cut here is this hole here it's just a little bit bigger than the tripod uh, the actual lens on the camera you basically what you want to do is choose the lens that you're going to be using perhaps more than anything else for your studio work or your piece to camera um, so that is the piece I've cut out that will then sit into there um, we can have some more shading on there or some more cover and maybe some black cloth over here but essentially that's now going to provide the way to film whilst your presenter is presenting their program there you are the camera in the back and then what I should have done actually is to bring down my daughter's iPad and then that sits into here and I'll show you in fact, what we'll do, I'll just take a quick break, I'll go bring my daughter's iPad, I'll sit it in there, and we'll use an app to play some, some uh, teleprompter text, and uh, we'll be back with you in a few seconds. Thanks for staying with me while I was away for a few seconds. Few seconds! I've just been upstairs to uh, bring 
down to my studio, my daughters, I don't have an iPad. I don't I actually have any screens or monitors I can place in there right now, but I thought, well, we'll give it a try with my iPad, with my daughter's iPad, which is a seven and a half inch, I think, screen, it's not very big, uh, 20 centimeters, yeah, seven and a half, by uh, what's that? Uh, 15 centimeters, which is five and a half inches. So it's a uh, it's classified as a seven and a half inch uh, iPad. Excuse me. So I did a bit of research. Um, I will eventually purchase a, a teleprompter app, but I'm just using this um, open source software, which is called Z. I'll give you the link in the descriptions or uh, comments below, descriptions below. But it's called ZAQ, and it's just an open source uh, online piece of software for using with uh, a teleprompter, free teleprompter, and it works actually very well. Uh, this is on my daughter's iPad now. It's not, we didn't download it, it's just open source, and we can just use it online. And this gives you a few options to scroll slower or faster, uh, it gives you the option to have large text, uh, full screen size. Um, you can have a look at this online and also to be able to mirror most uh, downloadable teleprompter apps before you can mirror your uh, text, which is vitally important obviously. You can't read your text upside down. You need to be able to mirror this screen onto this screen so you can read it and this gives you uh, mirrored uh, mirrored uh, text which is fantastic and thank you to zaq.com they're not sponsoring this by any means but um, uh, it's uh, it's providing me with um, some software and application so I can uh, show you and obviously practice with my um, teleprompter so here we go I'm just going to put a little bit of text into here now I'm going to go around and place this into the teleprompter so you can see this working. I'm just going to place this into the, if we start the teleprompter, place that into there, uh, the other way around I believe, yes this way around. So what I'm quite pleased about is the fact that the, the text um, that's reflecting on the screen, on the glass, is actually quite clear. Do we really need to use professional beam splitter glass? Uh, I don't think we do. I think for the sort of applications that, that I have in particular, this is fine. So I'm just going to put the camera at the back. Okay, so the camera's in place, but uh, that's, that's giving you an idea of how that can work. Let's start the teleprompter, put that over there, and that, as you can see, is working quite nicely. And there you can see the camera in the background. This obviously still needs to be blacked out more, but that works fine. Okay, so the next stage is for me to now place the camera where it would normally be, and for me to speak uh, and read script uh, that's been uh, presented on the iPad. I'll be back with you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be behind the camera now, just show you what I've set up. I've set up the camera uh, with the teleprompter cover already in place and there you can see the camera the lens pointing through the hole in the back and of course it's uh, the uh, cameras on the tripod and the teleprompter is on the uh, keyboard stand okay so let's give this a try now what I need to do is uh, set up the iPad so that it's uh, positioned correctly. There you can see the iPad has the software already uh, ready to go and you can see the reflection of the iPad in the screen in the glass that uh, was from an old picture frame. Okay so now the, uh, the software, the um, open source which is uh, you've got to use it online, it's not downloadable is called Z-A-Q, Z-Z-A-Q-U-E, and that's pretty much ready to go. 
Uh, now, I'm going to have a look at this, whether I can read that from uh, a distance. So, um, as you can see, I've set up the teleprompter. Let me just turn my camera around. I've set up the teleprompter software to roll, and uh, I don't see an issue. I'm going to set my camera, my A7R rolling, so we can record the image from that too. Okay, so I can now read that, uh, that text uh, fairly straightforward, very easily in fact. And uh, let me just read a little bit. Holdings and Singtel for a digital full bank license and Ant Group for a digital wholesale bank license. So what we have, we have a homemade teleprompter that works. And uh, anybody that wants to uh, build one, uh, I can certainly build one for you. Just need the sizes. Uh, are you going to use with an iPad? You don't want such a big one that I have. Uh, you want it for basic use in a studio. That's fine. Um, I will take orders, but I need to work out some prices first. Um, so that's my teleprompter. Uh, I've built it over the last couple of days. Um, if I had work to do, proper work to do, I probably wouldn't have uh, spent any time doing that, but it makes sense to make a few things that you can be proud of, that can work, and of course save you money overall. And uh, not only that, but they're customised to the size that you really want. And I felt that this was, uh, it is necessary for me to build this sort of size, which is about 50 centimetres, 60 centimetres by 35, 40 centimetres, uh, so I can place a fairly decent laptop or a screen under there. And in, but you know what, now I've tested it with the iPad. Now I've just tested this with the, with the iPad, the small iPad. It actually works very well. Thank you for joining me today. So I decap, uh, have a great life in the world of video productions. Bye bye.